Yo, what up, what up, what up? It's the M-I-C-C-A-S-T-E-R-J. That's me, the Mike Caster. And we back with another episode of Trust the Plus. All right? <laughs> and today, uh, tonight, or whatever time period, <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about hope. All right? First, let's jump right into the prayer. Father God, I pray that you move me out of the way, Lord, and allow your message to come forth, Father God. Um, that the words conveyed here are but of knowledge to the ears of those listening, Father God. Knowledge that you have bestowed upon me to provide, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Basically, I just want to make sure God turn around and speaks. <laughs> you guys gained something out of this. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, we're going to talk about hope. Our title this time is trying to cope with hope which is very appropriate and we'll get into that in a second as i make you run your attention because this is another episode of trust the plus here 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 so what keep your head up right with me let's go keep your ears up and listen to me let's go keep your head up right with me let's go keep your ears up Now we're back from that terrible introduction. <laughs> Yo, let's jump into it, all right, man? So, um, yeah, you know, I felt hope was an appropriate topic, you know, as uh, things, you know, tend to kind of give life more towards the bleak side nowadays, you know, it's important to understand one of the most important tools as, you know, not just a person of faith, you know, not just a person of Christ, you know, but, you know, as people. That hope is a useful tool in general. And it's universal, y'all. Um, it's across all kinds of religions, across all kinds of thought processes in humanity. Uh, even animals have hope. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, um, it's important how to harness it. And it's important to understand how to utilize it and why we need to utilize it, right? But before we get into all of that, the question that I have for you um, that you guys heard me pose off in a TikTok, and I kind of tweaked it a little bit, is, you know, do you have hope? You know, what gives you hope? How can we continue um, the hope, you know, hope habits, right? Because it's a habit. Um, reason being is because it's very easy to lose it. Um, <laughs> hope is something you have to continuously um, get yourself in the thought process of doing. It's supposed to continuously have, you know, same thing as we talked about with joy, right? Um, the minute you stop acknowledging it is the minute you lose it, right? So you have to constantly be, you know, be hopeful, um, you know, be uh, in a state where, you know, your faith and your understanding of, you know, what you want to accomplish, you know, what struggle you want to get out of, you know, fill in the blank, right? It's going to be achieved, right? And for that, you need hope. <laughs> but yeah, you know, now, the reason for the title is interesting because notice I said um, trying to cope with hope, right? Because, again, um, it's hard for people to utilize. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff in life now just makes you just want to lose hope so quickly. So the thing with the word cope is, you know, by definition, the word cope is to deal effectively with something, right? And a lot of us trying to hope, but we're not dealing effectively with that hope, right? We're just like, oh, I hope this happened. I hope this happens. It's just like a loose term. You know, I think um, my pastor said it best. Um, you know, the hope is thrown around a lot. You just throw the word hope around a lot, man. We, you know, hope to win a lot of ticket and get a lot of money, right? We uh, hope we pass an exam, um, you know, but what's, what's behind that hope? How are we harnessing that, right? How are we channeling that energy or, you know, uh, creating the manifestation of the hope that we are asking for, right? And we'll get into all of that, man. Um, as as always, let's get into the definition of hope itself, right? So we're going to start with Webster's. That's right, Webster's. I'm going to be back on you again. Um, <laughs> so hope, you know, is a feeling of expectation and desire 
for a certain thing to happen. So here we go again. Yeah, I already know. I'm not going to go too far in my soapbox, but you already know. Anytime desire isn't involved, we're more than likely not harnessing the way we should, right? You know, the desire for things to happen, a feeling of expectation, a feeling of expectation, right? So hold on to that. Okay. Now, going over to the biblical side, um, the way the Bible sees hope, right? There's actually a word for it. It's called kava, right? Um, and then the Bible kind of uses it to denote hope in the same sense as trust, right? You know, like um, in uh, Jeremiah uh, chapter 14, verse 22, you know, when uh, Jeremiah is addressing God as our hope is in you, right? Our trust. Because that's, that's this is one of the, the prospects of hope, y'all. Remember, everything always has a key component to it. Um, the main component is God, as you can see there, right, at the end of that. Um, but the other component is trust. You need trust in order for hope to work. It's not, it's not enough to just say the word hope without trust, right? You have to, again, believe it. We're talking about that faith. Believe it. Actually know in your heart of hearts that it's going to happen. And the way you do it that ties at the end of that is having that hope in God, believing that God will do what you asked him, but God will do what he say he will going to do for you. All right. That's that's how hope works in order to enact that, in order to create that cycle, in order to build up that energy of hope. Right. Got to be trust. And then with the word itself, Kava, you know, Kava is to wait, look for, expect all right, but not in the feeling of expectation, to actually expect it, to know. Again, we talked about that knowing, to know that it will happen, to wait for it. Because, you know, a lot of us, uh, when we use the word hope, we think it's supposed to be an instantaneous word that means we're going to get it immediately. And it's not. It's not going to come immediately. All right. So if your thought process is saying the word hope or using the word hope is to expect immediate results, you are going down a very dangerous pit. <laughs> and here's the ladder. Let's pull you out, yo. <laughs> hey, you know, we don't want you in there because that's, that's a terrible pit we put ourselves in, right? You know, we put ourselves in this pit where we're like, you know, I hope this happens. And then we're thinking, you know, when I open, we're like, I hope this happens. And we're like, right now. And it's not, <laughs> it's like, no, nah, man, that's not, that's not the way hope works. You got to trust it, man. You got to trust it. You got to trust in everyone's favorite word, process. <laughs> you gotta trust in the process man the hope hope is a process that's why you have to make it habitual hope is habitual you have to always have hope in the midst of everything um because the minute you lose it the minute is the same time you lose that trust again hope in the bible is synonymous with trust so you lose that trust and since hope is attached to god and you have to hope towards God and hope towards everything that God has said to you, right? When you lose hope, um, you know, from God and you pull that hope from God, you're ultimately losing trust. You lost trust in God, right? And see how it ties around? I know that's kind of, but, you know, bear with me, man. Um, you see how that ties around, though? Like, got to have that trust aspect, right? You know, there's a verse, not sorry for my finger being up in the way. Um, there's a verse, you know. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer, right? Be joyful in hope. I don't know if y'all notice, but we make hope seem like such a sad thing, man. You know, it's displayed over and over again in the way people kind of utilize it, always for bad situations. It's displayed over and over again in the middle of the movie when people are at the climax and everyone's hoping for the hero to come back and there's every, all is almost lost, you know. But hope is, you know, it's supposed to be a joyful thing that the the thought process of hope and the other aspect of hope, aside from the trust aspect, is carrying on. Right. So hope is is an action like, you know, the Bible displays it more as like an action, you know, actually still maneuvering through and still operating as if it's not happening, not ignoring it. All right. Got to be careful of that. Um, because, you know, people, you know, people tend to teach that and that conversation seems to come up whenever you talk about hope, man. Like, oh, they ignore this. Don't worry about this. No, no. Yo, what up? What up? It's the M-I-C-C-A-S-T-E-R-J. That's me, the Mike Caster. Teaming up with you guys at Habits 365. Turn around rocking the wear, man. Got the shirt. We got the hat. Anybody turn around and interested, they got a strong message of in, um, enforcing strong positive habits. You know, a strong mental health mentality, all the things that I'm about, man. So you can check it out 
with the link that's attached to this video. And you can utilize my code and get yourself 20% off. Ignoring the struggle, but acknowledging it and still carrying on anyway is how hope works, right? That's how that's how that's that's how you make it more effective. That's how that's how hope genuinely takes place. You have the trust and then now you're acting within it, right? You're acting within the faith. You already have that expectation. So you're going in um in the process of that expectation, right? You already know what you asked for, you already know what you want to happen, and you're operating as if you know what's happening or it's already happening right now. All right. Still acknowledging what's going on, but you're still continuing for it. It's not beating you down. It's not wearing you down. All right. So I got a couple of points for, um, you know, hope. And these are things that um, or aspects of hope that you take away that kind of helps put a more perspective of what I'm talking about. Right. When it comes to how to harness that hope. Right. How to utilize it. So and it comes in the way that hope is used in itself in the midst of, you know, struggles. So. You know, when you have hope, hope can bring us joy and peace in the midst of turmoil, all right? So, you know, our first thought process in the midst of turmoil is to immediately have grief and despair, all right? But through hope, through trust, through trusting in God, through putting that hope in God and hope that God will get us through that, we can look at turmoil and still still smile, you know, still see the, the bright side, still be able to calm ourselves down in the midst of the storm, right? So that's important. You know, another thing is, you know, hope, you know, can provide endurance and patience instead of tempting us to quit. Right. So, you know, when we don't have hope, uh, we don't we, we don't utilize that endurance. We don't have that patience again, because remember, it's also the weight during your affliction. Right. So. You know, being patient in affliction. Right. So, you know, our first thought process is always to quit, man, when, you know, um, when things are getting hard, when, uh, when we, you know, we feel like it's, it's straining and it's too much. And again, you know, you're by yourself alone is too much. Right. But when you add that God part, you know, listen to me, man, when you add that God part, when you have that trust part, when you know that, you know, that, you know, that, you know, right. You hear that all the time. Um, that amplifies so much and you'd be surprised what you can actually you know, pull through, which you can actually push through the strength that God will actually reach out of you and even shock yourself. You know, I've shocked myself many a times because, <laughs> you know, I, the Lord knows I've been burnt out a lot, man. So, you know, I get it. You know, and like I said, I like to talk about myself, so you can't get mad if I talk about me. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I get it, man. Um, it's easy for us to just get into that. Oh, it's all over with. It's done. Uh, but, you know, through hope, you know, we get that endurance, we get that patience because we have that trust in God. Right. And he instantly provides us that strength. OK, because we're always trying to think of the monetary aspect or some kind of finalization or anything like that. But we don't think about, you know, the ability to make it through the process, the struggle that we're in. Right. Because that in itself is also something that we need. We don't think about that often. We just think about how we want this, how we want the bigger picture to look at the end of this, how, you know, how soon we want to get out of this. Right. But yeah, I get through it to get to the end, right? You gotta, you gotta run the marathon, all right? Nobody just teleports and ends up at the finish line. You gotta run it. So you need hope to run it. <laughs> if you think about it in that sense, right? Um, you know, another thing is um, hope can offer confidence in the face of doubt, which is the key thing. That's what I used, I used to struggle with a lot. You know, every now and again, it still creeps up on me. You know, doubt. Doubt, 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 doubt. A very huge enemy for the human race, man. For people in general, man. It's just... It's so easy for us to turn around and just get, you know, in our heads and just be like, yeah, I, no, I can't do this. It's 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 not in me. I, I, I'm not capable of this. Or this is not in my wheelhouse. I don't know. We find all kinds of excuses, right? I know, Lord knows I found all kinds of excuses to tell me why I couldn't do something, right? So, but through hope, right? Um, confidence. All right. So notice how hope always transforms into the very thing we need during whatever struggle we're dealing with, which is why it's important to trust God, because through trusting God and giving God that hope, he then harnesses that hope into something that we need to get through that initial struggle. I want you to catch that. All right. You know, that's where I'm going with this. And I promise you, there's a point, man. Um, that's where I'm going with this. He harnesses it. OK, because we're talking about how to harness, how we use it, how do we keep it right? How do we have hope? Um, how do we hold on to that? 
we got to give it to God, right? You got to trust God so that God can harness it into something that we can use, right? To help us, to, to make that hope turn into something powerful enough to get us through what it is that we need, um, that we don't even realize we don't have at the time, right? So, yeah, it can offer confidence in the face of doubt. Um, another great thing is um, hope can motivate us to get up and seize each day and not just go through motions with no expectation to change, right? Because that's a big one. Because, um, again, going back to the initial way that we like to utilize hope, instant, instant, right? We use the word hope and we just assume that it's supposed to be a quick fix. I, well, I use the word hope. I use the H words. So now everything's supposed to change and, 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 and transform itself, right? It's, let's go, guys. Let's do it now. You know, no, um, it's not. It's not going to. So, you know, hope is also very important to get through that very thought process of why we use the word hope in the first place, right? And that's to be able to go through the long game of stuff that is not immediately going to change overnight, right? You know, erasing those expectations of fast results. Um, you need hope for that because, you know, some things are just, uh, some things aren't just a, you know, let me pray it and God makes it disappear um, the next day. And God can do that. God's perfectly capable of doing it. And there are some things where God will do that, but sometimes it's not that simple. All right. So you need that hope to kind of carry on that capability to press forward. Right. Um, and then lastly, you know, hope can keep us positive in an oftentimes negative world. So if everything else I said sounded like jargon, and you remember the, the Hebrew word I gave you, Kava, or anything like that, man, just know this, man, you need hope in this negative world, man. You, it's very hard to get far with, without it, you know, because, again, everything's trying to weigh you down. Everything's trying to sell you on the fact that eh, this world's going down. This is it. This is over. Yeah, stay away from stuff like that, man. So you need hope. You need that faith. You need that trust in God that God's going to do what he said he does. God's going to look out you, look after you the way he said he would. God's going to take care of you the way he says he does, right? And you got to hope. You got to hold on to that. You got to have faith. You got to believe that. Um, you got to keep your inner peace in the midst of a burning city and still be able to look at it and go, <laughs> well, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> That's hope. That's what hope looks like. Hope is not, well, water's going to drop down. No, hope is walking through a city on fire and still knowing that, well, God said I'm going to be fine. So guess what? I'm going to be fine. It's in the midst of calamity, right? It's not at the end. It's not something that you throw at the beginning to get you to the end. It's in the midst of, all right, is when it's at its most powerful. Is when we can harness it and it turns into what it needs to, right? So hope is hard to achieve because, you know, it forces us to acknowledge our ideal instead of run. And that's what we naturally want to do. Our natural instincts when stuff gets difficult is to run. And that's OK. We're human. Um, you know, it's, it's the first reaction because it's uncomfortable. It's discomfort. Right. But hope helps us pull past that. So the way we continue to have those hopeful habits is continue to trust in God, to continue to push forward that hope, to continue to know that I'm going to make it through this. Right. That. This is going to happen no matter what, right? And that is how you have hope, right? That's how you know you have hope. If you cannot do that, then I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm praying for you. I'm, I, I want you to know, get that, get you something, man. You know, reestablish re that faith, be back into the world, talk to somebody, but get that hope, man. Keep that hope. Do not lose that, all right? Um, other than that, that's all I got. This has been another episode a TTP. I am the M I C C A S T E R J. That's me, the Mike Caster, and I will catch you back next time. I love you guys and keep hope alive. Keep hope alive. Keep hope.